Good morning. How do you pack for a one-way trip to Babylon? Our reading today is Jeremiah 10, verses 17 through 22. Gather up your wares from the land, O inhabitant of the fortress. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will throw out at this time the inhabitants of the land, and will distress them that they may find it so. Woe is me for my herd, my wound is severe, but I say, truly, this is an infirmity, and I must bear it. My tent is plundered, and all my cords are broken. My children have gone from me. They are no more. There is no one to pitch my tent any more, or set up my curtains. For the shepherds have become dull-hearted, and have not sought the Lord. Therefore they shall not prosper, and all their flocks shall be scattered. Behold, the noise of the report has come, and a great commotion out of the north country to make the cities of Judah desolate, a den of jackals. How sad it would be to be headed for Babylon. The people haven't been faithful, and God is evicting them from the land of promise for a period of time. And in this text, Jeremiah uses a tent metaphor. Who's throwing them out of the land? Well, God is. And God had gone with them as the sanctuary. They set up the tent at his command and took it down at his command as they traveled through in the return from Egypt. And so this tent, this metaphor of tent, should be very well understood by these people. God has been faithful to them, but they haven't been faithful to him, and now he's going to remove them. How do you pack for Babylon? Well, you, you pack what you can carry. In verses 19 and 20, God speaks his sorrow. He feels hurt. He's sad that, that this is a step that needs to be taken. Who's going to set up my tents? Who's going to journey with me? I came to journey with you, and now you're going to have to go away into a different place. It's a sad time. Who will pitch his tent? Who will set up his curtains? Exodus 25, he said, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. But now they are carried away into captivity, imminent to happen here. So God is quite sad. He wants to dwell with his people, but notice it's more important for them to receive this discipline from him than to have the sanctuary system functional for a bunch of people that are clearly their heart isn't in it. And what good can it do a nation of hypocrites anyway? So for a period of time, this isn't going to happen the way they have been doing it all this time. We really must not uh, underestimate the goals of Jesus. Jesus has goals, and you and I are involved. His plan is to remove sin from his people. That's just, it's a has-to-be kind of thing. There's no other way. You know, we're not even designed to live apart from God. He regards us as his own unique people, and he endures quite a bit in his attempt to bring us back, to bring us back. The Bible tells us that God is of purer eyes than to behold evil. Ask the prophet Habakkuk. And at the end of the book of Revelation, we find that God says, let he who is holy be holy still, let he that is filthy be filthy still. In other words, People have sorted themselves out. The people who are going to serve self have decided who they are by their actions, by their choices. The people who have decided to be surrendered to God and, and be serving of others. They've made their decision. They've become more like Jesus. The other groups become more like Satan and his devils. So everybody's, everybody's sorting themselves out. Everybody's making their decisions. The people of Judah, the kingdom of Judah, were making their decisions. And they were making a lot of bad decisions here. So God sent his prophet Jeremiah to give them some strong messages to try to wake them up and get them into clarity about some of these things. This is something we can be sure of. Humans who desire to follow Jesus, we will see our desire fulfilled. God is willing, he's ready, he's able, and if we just surrender to him, he will do it. He will do it. He'll complete a work that he's begun in you. Let's pray together. You're working the, not in vain. This isn't just uh, harsh punishment for no reason. You're trying to help your people come to a place where they can return to you. So, Lord, thank you for that. Uh, we certainly want to give you permission to do whatever you would do in our own cases. So, Lord, bless us, we pray, and we thank you. We can ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. It would be sad to be headed to Babylon and know that it's because of your unfaithfulness as God's people. May God preserve us today from that kind of fate. God be with you.